Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Gufran Babur, and you are watching my YouTube channel. Uh, today's video would be on thyroid illness uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Thyroid is a gland which is located in the front of our neck, uh, which performs uh, different functions by making a hormone which is called uh, thyroid hormone T4 and T3. Uh, this gland uh, is under the control of our master gland, the pituitary gland in the brain, which in turn is under control of higher centers and hypothalamus. Uh, so there's a signal that comes from the higher centers called thyrotropin releasing hormone, and subsequently TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone is released from the master gland, the pituitary, and which acts on the thyroid itself. And thyroid then manufactures uh, the T3 and T4. So thyroid is the factory uh, which prepares the thyroid hormone. So thyroid gland could be affected uh, by a number of conditions. Uh, and we could have either low or high thyroid hormone levels. Uh, the low thyroid hormone levels, I typically say that everything is low. Uh, you know, uh, the patient or the person uh, feels tired, fatigue, uh, respiratory rate is slowed down, heart rate, blood pressure are slowed down, you may be depressed, intestinal movements are slowed down so people can have constipation. Uh, in kids, puberty could be delayed, their growth could be affected. Uh, their muscle tone would be low and uh, they can have uh, a hoarse voice because of the edema of the vocal cords. The skin could be dry, the hair could be brittle. And the body temperature which is regulated by the thyroid hormone could be low and people may feel cold. So typical example I gave is that in winter you are in your home and uh, you're feeling uh, cold, you have a blanket on, you don't, don't want to do anything. So such kind of symptoms can happen in a person with low thyroid hormone levels, even if there is no winter. So that is classic picture. And another very, very, very important function of thyroid hormone is uh, effect on the brain development. In first three years of life in children, it helps in development of IQ. Uh, because it causes the maturation of the brain, it causes myelinization of the nerves, uh, migration of the neurons, maturation of the neurons. And if someone does not get thyroid hormone in the first three years of life and they need it, uh, they can have permanent brain damage. So that's why there is a universal screening for low thyroid hormone function in US. And babies are tested uh, preferably around 48 hours of life with a heel test in which a blood sample is collected and thyroid uh, hormone levels are checked uh, with, along with other uh, congenital illnesses, metabolic disorders and hormonal insufficiencies. Uh, if the child is low, uh, it could be that the thyroid gland is absent, is small, is non-functioning, so levothyroxine has to be started to make sure that the child's brain development happens. And after age three years, if the thyroid hormone replacement dose is very, very low, there could be a trial of uh, this medicine uh, being taken off uh, and repeating thyroid hormone levels. If they are normal, you don't need to restart the medicine, but if this indicate, and the TSH is actually the GPS that guides us uh, regarding our decision whether we want to increase or decrease the dose of tablet uh, levothyroxine, which is actually the replacement thyroid hormone given in the form of a tablet. So this is the hypothyroidism, which is the low thyroid hormone levels. The other side of the picture of the thyroid gland uh, function is high amount of thyroid hormone. And remember, hormones are the chemicals or the signals which are released from one organ and they may go out to a distant site to perform their function. 
So the hyper means everything is high. So I give a typical example of someone in uh, a park and someone else's dog is starts chasing you. So what happens? Your pupils dilate, you want to look around because these hormones, the thyroid hormones, they work on the adrenergic receptors. So your eyes dilate, pupils dilate, your heart rate, breathing goes up, your intestinal movements can go fast, but you don't use bathroom because you are trying to save life, the fight and fright kind of a response. Uh, you, your glucose utilization goes up and the body starts using glucose by breaking down muscles. So muscles could become weak. Uh, your uh, uh, sexual uh, functions could become abnormal. Menstrual cycles can become irregular. The bone mineralization could go down, uh, you know, and the person uh, could have elevated body temperature in addition to heart rate and blood pressure. So if these things happen when a dog is not chasing you, you are inside your home and you are having these symptoms and you're feeling palpitations, meaning your heart is beating fast, people notice tremors in the hands, the eyes can sometimes become bulging. So those things are classical symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And the usual treatment is give antithyroid medications like methimazole, beta blockers to slow down the heart rate uh, and treatment usually is given for two years and usually the gland settles down in two years most of the time if remission happens you restart the treatment however in some cases you may need uh, in older people in which the disease is either not responding to medications or is very 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 uh, severe uh, you can use the radioactive iodine sometimes it is used as a primary form of treatment which can basically kill the thyroid gland and you develop permanent hypothyroidism and need the levothyroxine replacement. Uh, so these are the two sides of the thyroid illness. So during this phase of pandemic of COVID-19, a lot of people ask if they already have a thyroid illness, are they more predisposed to uh, COVID-19 or COVID-19 can affect their illness. So in terms of pre-existing hypo or hyperthyroidism, as long as they are taking their medication, they are okay. They may not be affected because both these conditions could be autoimmune, meaning autoantibodies can either destroy the gland, which is in hypothyroidism, and a common name for this condition is Hashimoto's, which is basically a Japanese uh, endocrinologist who described the condition. And the other is the Graves' disease which was described by Graves, basically thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins overstimulate the gland and you make too much of hormone, which causes hyperthyroid symptoms. So these conditions being autoimmune do, do not mean that you will be susceptible to COVID-19 infection. However, if you get the COVID-19 infection, which is a viral infection, it can attack the thyroid gland. And there was a nice study uh, which was performed in Italy by Dr. Mueller and was published in Lancet, uh, which is a very famous journal of uh, endocrinology and diabetes in July of 2020. They describe that people who are in a high intensity uh, uh, care units, they may suffer from thyrotoxicosis or overactive thyroid gland. And these people are negative for autoantibodies, which is a thyroid stimulating uh, antibody, as well as the thyroid uh, uh, peroxidase and thyroglobulin autoantibody. So they do not have an autoimmune thyroid disease, but they develop hyperthyroid symptom, symptoms, which is basically an attack of the virus on the thyroid gland. And by this process of inflammation, uh, sometimes a lot of cells could be destroyed. They could release the stored hormone, which is during this inflammatory phase is called thyroiditis. And usually it is called subacute thyroiditis or decurvian thyroiditis, basically caused by the virus. So in this study by Dr. Mueller, 
uh, they looked at about 93 patients with COVID-19 in the high intensity care units and compared with them with, them with 50 patients uh, of 2019 uh, admitted in high intensity uh, care units, which did not have any COVID-19, as well as some patients in lower intensity care units, again, in 2019 with no COVID-19. So they saw that out of those 93 patients, 9% uh, uh, people uh, had uh, pre-existing thyroid disorders uh, and 21% in the lower intensity uh, care units. And uh, the finding was that a significant higher number of patients in high intensity care units in 2020 group uh, had thyrotoxicosis, uh, which was 13 out of 93, which is about 15%. So these people had overactive thyroid symptoms and they were in really, really, really sick mode. Uh, and uh, usually in subacute thyroiditis or decurvian thyroiditis, you can develop hyperthyroid, which can last for a few weeks to months. And then you go into hypothyroidism. Ultimately, you may develop the euthyroid or normal thyroid hormone levels. So they say that at this time, those uh, 13, uh, those uh, 13 out of 93 are hyperthyroid and they will follow these patients long term. The usual treatment is uh, steroids, corticosteroid to decrease the inflammation. And as you know, the dexamethasone, which is a steroid and has been approved by randomized controlled trials to be used in patients who are critically sick and have COVID-19. So they got the steroids. Other things which are helpful are beta blockers, which decrease the heart rate, regulate blood pressure, and decrease the adrenergic symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Aspirin could also be given, again, an anti-inflammatory effect. So this was the uh, you know report about these patients and six other studies have already been reported in different other places. The other thing that they found that the ACE2 receptors with which the COVID-19 binds are much higher in thyroid tissue as compared to lungs. So they can easily attack the thyroid gland and cause a viral thyroiditis and the symptoms that I described for hyperthyroidism would be present. In addition, some people may have pain in the thyroid gland. So anyone who is having COVID-19 uh, disease, they are experiencing a pain in the front of the neck and pain worsens on swallowing or uh, they, they notice a little swelling there like enlarged thyroid, which is called goiter. They should consult their doctor. Uh, to get their thyroid hormone levels checked to get appropriate uh, treatment. So down the line, uh, Dr. Mueller uh, and her colleagues are going to follow these patients and see if they go into hypothyroid phase or they become euthyroid, normal thyroid hormone levels later on in a few weeks to months, or they some of them may develop permanent hypothyroidism. Hypo means low thyroid hormone levels. So that's how COVID-19 disease can affect the thyroid gland. So, but if you already have pre-existing thyroid condition like hypo or hyper, the hypo is autoimmune condition with Hashimoto's name and hyper is a Graves disease. It does not predispose you to develop any serious thyroid hormone problem. However, regardless of your previous status, the virus can attack the gland and can destroy the gland, can cause inflammation in the gland, and can have the release of stored hormone into the blood. And during this inflammatory phase, the patient can have increased thyroid hormone levels, and those increased thyroid hormone levels will give you similar symptoms as in autoimmune overactive thyroid gland. The treatment, like I mentioned before, is easy by giving beta blockers, steroids, aspirin and usually it should go into hypo and normal levels or it may result in permanent hypothyroidism. I hope that this video uh, uh, was useful for you guys. Please like and subscribe my channel and uh, continue to follow my videos 
Thank you. May Allah bless us all and help us stay away from COVID-19. Don't forget that prevention is better than cure. So continue to wear masks, use hand sanitizer, hand washing, and social distances. distancing. May Allah bless you all. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabi wa sallam.